from Alp de Zwift. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, we're issuing a warning. How do you know when your love of cycling has gone too far? That's gonna be a good one. Uh, we've also been trawling through Kickstarter for the best and worst cycling innovations. We've also got the top stories from the week in the world of cycling. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu can pull a mean wheelie. Hey, Prime Minister! I heard that the people who are coming to Israel are coming to Israel. So I came to help you to fight. Is this a real situation? Did you see that? Real? But... Come on. Prime Minister, you can really ride. More impressive still is the fact that a Prime Minister is embracing a bike race so much, but such is the enthusiasm for the upcoming Giro d'Italia star in Jerusalem. Yeah, now we also learned this week that while Netanyahu is clearly a man of many talents, Tour of Senegal winner Dan Craven isn't. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Dan. Oh, yeah. Uh, both of you, I think, should stick to cycling, if I'm perfect. <laughs> Especially you, Dan. I mean, Dan just won the Tour de Senegal overall. Well, he should stick to cycling. I don't know what I've got now, mate. Yeah, Nothing. congratulations to that, Dan. Very impressive. Uh, this week, an amusing and yet slightly tragic story also hit the headlines here in the UK when it emerged that a police officer had been forced to resign because he was caught on a cycling holiday whilst at the same time claiming that a chronic back injury had meant that he could not go to work. Yeah, not cool, is it? Although, note to self, Strava can lead to incriminating evidence. Yeah. Let's remember that. Yeah. yeah, not hard to forget really, is it? But I think he has deleted his Strava account and it does make you think that modern technology makes it reasonably difficult to get away with bunking off work to ride your bike. And at the same time, if you can't then put it on Instagram or Strava or Facebook or Twitter, is there any point in riding your bike? Yeah, that's a good point there, actually. I can barely remember my ride from Sunday because that didn't end up anywhere. Although, actually, it also becomes a perfect crime because if it wasn't on Strava and you didn't Instagram it, technically it didn't happen. Exactly. Yeah, you could have got away with that, couldn't yeah. you? Uh, I did get us thinking, though, when does your love of cycling go a little bit too far? I mean that, really, you could do with a healthy dose of reality. <laughs> Can I get started? Yeah, I've on. got a bit of a confession to make. Uh, I once left a hot date, hot date early. I already don't believe this. Well, in order to go for a bike ride. Yeah. So I mean, admittedly, she was quite a kind of formidable character. But I, uh, I told her that my grandma was ill, so I needed to leave early. And all I did was go for a man bike ride. You lied. I How old were you? Her. Fifteen. Yeah. 15, that is so. a disgrace. I know. She. To be fair, she wasn't right. The relationship was clearly doomed. But you know. There it is. That was probably not my finest hour. Well, at least you got a ride and anyway. Uh, the next one though is pretty common, unlike Sai's first example. <laughs> Does it mean though that your love of cycling has gone too far? It is lying about how much your bike costs. Ooh. Ah yes, that is apparently a common one, isn't it? Most bike shops, it would seem, will have some kind of story about how they've been asked to print two receipts. One for an acceptable sum of money and then one for the real amount that's then settled with like a separate credit card or payment in cash. That is a definite warning sign, isn't it? Either that or it just harks back to your previous point and means your relationship is doomed. <laughs> yeah. All right, we also, we all know someone, don't we? A cyclist that just talks too much about cycling, particularly discussing power data at parties to non-cyclists. I mean, let's put it bluntly. If you need to explain what FTP means, it's probably not appropriate. Just to remind you, Si, you spend most of your life talking about cycling on YouTube <laughs> and also outside of YouTube as well. That, that is true, Dan, yeah. That, there, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got as bad a problem as anyone, let's put it that way. I do take your point. It is another warning sign. They perhaps just go out without your power meter on your bike for a couple of weeks just to see how it is. Yeah. I also think that one goes hand in hand with the whole weight issue. So oh, I'm incredibly concerned about their weight. Uh, I have been as well in the past, and I used to actually take it as a compliment when people came up to me and said, you look gaunt or ill. <laughs> yeah, apparently. It's not a compliment. Apparently it's not, no. is it? Yeah. 
Who would have thought it? Uh, now, we also reached out to you guys as well for your opinions on this. And as always, you have not disappointed. Okay, Fraser Godwin's going to get things started. When asked what the warning sign that you love a cycling gone too far was, he replied, when you can't answer this tweet because your wife follows you on Twitter. <laughs> there we go, there's a man who's got two receipts for every cycling yeah. purchase. Uh, Culp Fiction replied saying, when you take more pictures of your bike than your children. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Very good point. Uh, we also had quite a few uh, tweets and comments relating to the price of your car relative to your bike or your bikes. That is a big one, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I think it's only the last two years where my car has been worth about the same amount as my bike. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I also, another sign that your love of cycling perhaps has gone too far is when your choice of car is entirely governed by how easy it is to fit your bike in the back. <laughs> I mean, I once I had a Peugeot 306 Estate W. Oh, lovely little quite, motor that quite one, Quite a posh little thing that was. Uh, but it was before all these extra safety features came in down the side of the car, which meant that the boot, or the trunk, was extremely wide. And I could fit a bike box or bag in the boot sideways without taking any seats down or anything. It was amazing. Mate, I know exactly what you mean because I did precisely that. And I actually took my bike bag to car dealerships. You did not. Opened all the boots. <laughs> Try putting it in, I ended up with a Ford Focus estate, mate. So there we go, yeah. N not not a lovely car, but it, it did fit a lot in the Similar boots. level so to a yeah, Peugeot 306 That was absolutely I great. Uh, what about this one from Matthias uh, Carson then? He said, when you look at the weather forecast, and it says 15 metres per second average wind speed with peaks at 25 metres per second, and you know that the day is an utter write-off. Completely ruined. Well, hold on a second, Matthias. I mean, high winds, just look at the direction of the winds and go Strava KOM hunting. It's ripe. That's it, a very good point actually. As long as you're not supposed to be at work, put it on Strava and yeah, get some KOMs that day. Bill riding into shape jank, or yank, has put, you have dinner guests and they casually ask why you've replaced your coffee table with a bike on a trainer. That's a very good point actually. You know, we, we all have bikes in the living room from time to time, don't we? But, but yeah, yeah, that's probably a bad sign, isn't or it? Or why your bike's in the bath currently being cleaned. That is a very good point, actually. Yeah. We get them sent in all the time, don't <laughs> yeah, we? We do, don't we? Uh, we've got a couple of related ones here. Firstly, from Grant Hancock, who says you plan your first ever trip to Europe to coincide with major cycling races, either Belgium in the Great spring plan. or Alpine holiday in July. Uh, John Maguire, your holidays for the next two years are based around races that you want to see. That sounds brilliant. Come Which reminds sense, me of Abu Dhabi tour back in February, where I bumped into Robbie Williams. Oh, nice work, mate. Yeah, not the Robbie Williams, but rather a cycling fan who happened to have booked his holiday with his wife to Abu Dhabi at exactly the same time as the Abu Dhabi tour. So while she was by the poolside having a nice drink and relaxing and sitting in the sun, he was around the race paddock looking at all the bikes and the tech and going to the race starts and finishes and having a glorious time on his own with bikes. Nice work, Robbie. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a story I heard about you actually, Dan, who just happened to organise a short family break to Belgium at around the time of the Tour of Flanders, which is remarkable. Well, no, that is entirely coincidence uh, because I mainly went to Belgium because it produces some of the finest beers in the world. That's a good idea for a future segment, that, isn't it? How you know when your love of beer has gone too far. Yeah, future segment on an entirely different channel, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, it can be difficult, can't it, combining a love of cycling with a relatively normal life. I mean... I have struggled for many years, and I don't always talk about FTP at parties. But the ever brilliant Eben Weiss did give some great advice in his column for Outside Magazine a couple of months back. He suggests a simple test. Before announcing your riding intentions to your partner, say it to yourself first, but replacing the word ride or race with the phrase drinking binge instead. So you might, for example, say, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't meet your parents. Uh, I'm heading out of town this weekend for a two-day drinking binge. Or, let me know how the movie ends. I'm going to hit the bed early tonight to get some extra rest before a big drinking binge tomorrow morning. Yeah, or, ah, oh, still snowing outside. I think I'm going to head down to the basement for a couple of hours drinking binge. Or I'm off to drink binge to work. I made the last one up, but you're <laughs> right. He does give some very good advice, but you should also follow his advice where he says, repeat it to yourself. Yes, yes, because I... Uh read this, thought it was great, told my wife about it, and now every time I try and go for a couple of hours spin with some mates, she keeps on telling me that I'm going for a two hour drinking binge instead, and I keep trying to point out that no, I'm, it's not a drinking binge, but it could be, I've just instead chosen to go for a bike ride and have my social interactions that way instead. Mm. Anyway, never mind. I my tell bad. Lorraine that I'm off for another Friday and Saturday uh, endurance ride. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, anyway, we should wrap up that segment right there because we would like to ask you to leave your anecdote of when you know your love of cycling has gone a little bit too far. Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading oh, yeah. these because I know that you're going to have some great ones. So please leave them in the comment section below the video. It'll make us feel less bad about ourselves, won't it, for a start? Mm. It's now time for cycling shorts. We're going to start cycling shorts now in Lake Garda in Italy. Because as if the place wasn't enough of a cycling paradise already, local authorities have planned a 140 kilometer long cycling specific loop all around the lake. And it looks absolutely stunning. It does. Especially this bit, which is an elevated piece of the cycling track, which is 60 meters above the lake Whoa. itself. Almost looks like it's hovering there. Uh, absolutely love that bit. Uh, they're hoping to complete the entire route ready for 2021, but in the meantime, they will be opening a few sections to the public already this summer. And I would absolutely love to go and ride that track. Yeah, I would as well, actually. Garda by Bike uh, is its name. Uh, now, thinking about something that you might like, Dan, what about this? So we have already launched the GCN Cycling Club, and many of you have signed up, absolutely loving it, particularly the super cool socks, we've got to say. But we also heard about this this week, which is another cycling club, but themed around beer. Oh yeah, UK company Brewdog have just launched their cycling club called The Chain Gang, and it uses, among other things, their craft beer bars as clubhouses. Blimey, I'm in. Well, I'm not in yet, but sign me up for it. That sounds yeah. amazing. Uh, don't drink and ride, though. No. That is one of the offences amongst many others which authorities over in Iceland are currently cracking down on when it comes to cycling. Uh, apparently quadruple fines compared to Whoa. what they had before for offences such as not having lights, reflectors, brakes and also for running red lights. Crikey. It kind of makes me nervous the idea of quadrupling fines, particularly for reflectors because I'd come unstuck daily for that one. But you've got to say, haven't you, that... It's kind of fair enough that cyclists abide by the law yeah. as well. It's I got think to be that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, absolutely, it does. Yeah, we, like all other road users, need to toe the line and abide by the law. Got some good news for cyclists in the US now, and uh, Switzerland has got your backs. That's right, the country, Switzerland, uh, has partnered up with the US bike hire company Motivate to provide free access to public hire bikes in some of the major cities. So for example, City Bike in New York and Ford's Go Bike in San Francisco. And they say that you'll get between 30 minutes and three hours of free riding time, which is great. Weird, but great. Yeah. Yeah, the apparent reason behind this partnership is to enlighten people over there in the USA to the fact that Switzerland is not just great for hiking and skiing, but also has some fantastic cycling routes both on the road and also on the trails. Well, I mean, it does, doesn't it? It does. You only, you only had to watch the Tour of Romany last week to see just how stunning it was. Which leads me neatly on to another story, actually. If you were wondering why riders are uh, so keen to draft on climbs like they were at Tour of Romandy oh, last week. Yeah, nice See what I did there, yeah. Uh, then a study published recently in the Human Kinetics Journal could well give you the answer. Yeah, it might well do because the authors there found a 4.2% improvement in subjects who went up a climb drafting behind someone else versus when they did it as a time trial on their own. 60% of that 4.2% improvement came from drafting in that you do still benefit from being out of the wind on a climb. But the rest of the improvement came from the fact that they were enjoying the ride more. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense until you get dropped, in yeah. which case you don't enjoy difference. that very more. But yeah, 40% of it was down to the head. Yeah. Crazy. Right, do you remember that horrific crash that the Belgian rider Jan Bakelance had at Il Lombardia late last year in New Autumn? The one where he flipped over the barrier and plunged hundreds of metres into a ravine? Yes. Yeah, funny enough, I remember that one. That one. Uh, Lawrence de Plus also fell victim to the same corner and another rider whose name I forget. Could have been career ending for all of them, but thankfully yeah. they're all back racing, including Jan Bakelance himself, albeit one centimetre shorter <laughs> due to the damage that he did to himself. God. But he recently posted this picture on social media uh, showcasing the hardware, the metal hardware that was taken out of his bag. Blimey! What's a Euro doing in there? I, well, I don't think the Euro was in his bag. He just put that there to give some scale. Sure. I thought so. Yeah. Uh, right, now let's look back, just very briefly, shall we, to the Commonwealth Games. I know it was a couple of weeks back, but saw this. 
couldn't not mention it. This is the gold medal of the women's road race winner, Chloe Hosking. If you look closely, she has had the names of all her teammates engraved around the edge. How yeah. good is that? I really like that because although we all know that cycling is a team sport, it's fantastic to give that level of recognition to your teammates, isn't it? I'm sure they all really appreciate that as well. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we are going to finish cycling shorts with some really sad news. Uh, Jackie Crowell, former professional rider who was diagnosed with a brain tumour in October of 2013, unfortunately passed away last Wednesday after a four and a half year battle against the illness. She was just 30 years old. Yeah, despite that illness, she still found time to coach young riders and even continue competing herself. And she also uh, made this remarkable speech at the Amgen Tour of California in 2014. The statistics for this particular disease say I will not be alive come next year's Amgen Tour of California. But the statistics also said I would never have a career as a professional bike racer that as a female, I would not have a degree in mechanical engineering. And, in fact, they said that I'm one of the least likely people to be diagnosed with cancer in the first place. Needless to say, I don't believe in statistics, and I'm taking the viewpoint that my race for life is my Tour de France. Yeah, she was an incredible person, uh, very talented both on and off the bike, eloquent as you can see from that speech and extremely intelligent as well. And her passing has really affected the cycling world both far and wide. We shall leave you with these words written by Alexis Ryan, her former teammate. Rest in peace, Jackie. We have been trawling through Kickstarter. Yay! Right, first of all as well, we've got a graduate from Hack or Bodge. Do you remember this from a couple of months back? Well, meet the Leash Buddy. Yes, yeah. walk your dog hands-free. Yeah. It features, amongst other things, the most forgiving spring of any bike dog lead currently wow. out there on the market, and also a very flexible leash, just in case of any sudden squirrel sightings. Tell you what, Dan, sign me up for one of those. And while you're doing it, some of these as well. The Billy Bar, quick release, removable handlebar. Yeah, not only can you remove your handlebars, you can change them to effectively have a different style of bike, can't you? So yeah. you've got flat bars, drop bars, bull horns, and even cruiser bars. Perfect for the modern day gravel bike that doesn't quite know what it is. <laughs> yes, uh, very much so, Si. And we also stumbled across this, which we actually think might be up our street. if. It works, which yeah. is a big caveat, isn't it, with anything when it comes to crowdfunding websites. Uh, but this is the Aeropod, which will either measure your power or, this is the big thing, your aerodynamic drag out on the road in real time. Yeah. Now, you would have thought that this probably does work, given that it's the latest generation of the PowerPod, which is a device that has been relatively well established. And that also actually measured your aerodynamic drag, but not in real time, only in post-ride analysis. The way it works is that sticky output on the front is a bit like a pitot tube on an airplane. So tiny sensors in there can detect really small fluctuations in air pressure. So from that, apparently, it works out your wind speed. Then it's also got other sensors that calculate your velocity, your acceleration, the gradient. And when you combine all of that data with your weight, it can work out your power. Yeah, but the big thing, as we've kind of mentioned already, is the fact that when you pair it up with a conventional power meter, perhaps a chain set mounted power meter, it will then calculate your aerodynamic drag in real time out on the road, which means no more trips to wind tunnels. Yeah, and probably you would have thought more enlightening data because you're on the open road and not in a wind tunnel. Yeah. There are devices out there that already exist like this, although none of them seem readily available, do they? Uh, I saw it at Eurobike from Argon 18 a couple of years ago. Swiss side have been talking about theirs for a while, but again, not actually out there. And Alpha Mantis have been going for years and years. They got bought by Garmin last year. But again, not really readily available tech, is yeah. it? Exciting stuff, isn't it? It is. I wouldn't mind getting my hands on some of this, actually. Mm. I've got a party on Friday night, and I'm going to tell my mates all about the Aeropod. Yeah. Because then you wouldn't need such a big FTP either if you could work out your CDA. Yeah. That's going to be... Can I come to that party? I wouldn't mind being part of that conversation. 
GCN's Wiggle of Fortune now, which is where one lucky contestant each week puts themselves in with a chance of winning one of four prizes, courtesy of Wiggle themselves. Uh, four voucher amounts, prize four is £25, right up to the top prize, prize one, which is a full £150. Or I could finally win a beer. That's right, prize number five, one stop on the GCN Wiggle of Fortune is that Lloydie wins a beer. Lloydie walks over to our fridge, grabs us a nice cold beer. And you unfortunately get nothing other than that warm fuzzy feeling of seeing Dan's happy little face. Mm. Anyway, this week's lucky contestant is Mark Foster from right here in the UK, actually. You feeling lucky, Mark? Let's go for it. Dan? Three, two, one, and we're up. Okay, come on. Where's the beer, Dan? You got your eyes I've on the got prize. Got my eyes right on the beer. Yeah. Oh, it's so close. Last week, I thought it I was, was going to get it. it. It's looking close again, mate. It's looking close again. Oh yes, come on. Oh, this is it. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. You're I not don't get believe it. it. It's rigged. I swear it's rigged, Dan. I can't anyway, believe that. Mark Foster, congratulations. That is twenty-five pounds of wiggle vouchers winging its way to you. I'm really sorry, mate. How many weeks have we been doing this now? The last two, it's looked certain for a beer and just skipped past it. That's quite, that's actually yeah. uncanny, isn't it? Uh, don't forget, if you want to put yourself in with a chance of being the contestant on next week's show, uh, you can find all the details on how to do that in the long description below this video. I'll, I'll buy you one later, mate. I feel really bad for mm. you. Racing news now, and Primoz Roglic has certainly cemented himself as one of the riders of the men's peloton so far in 2018, with a win overall at the Tour de Romandy last week. Uh, that we said how stunning that race is, by the way. Yeah. I mean, Switzerland really is stunning. I didn't know it until I went on a city bike over in the States recently, and I thought, it's beautiful over yeah. in Switzerland, I'm going to go and visit. Anyway, uh, that was hot on the heels of his overall victory at the Tour of the Basque Country earlier on this month. And with that victory, I think he has basically proclaimed himself one of the best current stage race riders in the world in only his third year in the World Tour. Yeah, what's going to be his first Grand Tour victory, Dan? Oh, well, actually, I asked this question on the Racing News Show yesterday. Uh, where did people think he was going to finish at the Tour de France this year? 75%, as we record this, said top 10. Only 2% said the win, and about 15% said podium. Yeah, I think podium, you've got to say. He's going that well, way, yeah. if you can keep it going. Uh, I tell you what, though, the runner-up at Tour de Romandie, uh, he too is going to wear the crown of amazing up-and-comer, sometimes using it, Egan Bernal. Mm. Uh, he won... Smashed, in fact, the 10 kilometer uphill time trial, so beating Roglic, of course, in the process, and also totally lit up the Queen stage in order to try and snatch the race victory. And he's only 21 years old, yeah. isn't he? Which is bonkers. And it, such was the speed that he did the uphill time trial that he actually eliminated half of the quick step team. Yeah, they got they did. didn't make the time cut. Isn't that cool? Quite nice to see him not winning something, actually, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, Fernando Gaviria and uh, Elia Viviani were two of the riders who had to go home early. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was a surprise win for German Charlotte Becker over at the Tour of Chongming Island, which is the latest round of the Women's World Tour. Uh, she'd escaped with four other riders on stage two and crossed the line first with the peloton behind misjudging their effort, and she held on to that on the final day of racing. Yeah, some slightly bad news, though, from the women's calendar, and that is that for the second year running the Route de France Féminine has been cancelled and that is because one of the departements which was going to host two of the stages has pulled out so mm. they are short of funds and location. Yeah it's a real disappointment isn't it and you Massive, do wonder yeah. whether it's going to be the catalyst for a proper women's tour de France from the same organisers as the men's ASO. And they have already said that they are thinking about it, but you'd imagine they're thinking pretty seriously at the moment, especially given how successful the women's tour has been here in the UK for the last couple of years. And also, the women's tour to Yorkshire, up to two days this year, and that is a race that is overseen by the ASO. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right, some good news, though, now. Uh, and Team Sunweb, who, of course, have a men's team, a women's team, and an under-23 team, have just confirmed a new agreement with their title sponsor, Sunweb, of course, and that is quite remarkable in fact, I've never heard of anything quite as good in cycling before, but basically when their current contract ends at the end of 2019, the new contract, which is a rolling contract, will come into play, and if at any point either party decides to pull out, there'll be a full two year notice period, plus however long is left of the season in which the notice is given. So that's like, 
Let's talk about safety. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? It's really good news. It's particularly in a time at the moment where lots of the top teams' funding seems to be balancing on a knife edge, doesn't it? It's basically often a rich businessman who's having a bit of fun. You know, Oleg Tinker being a prime example, but there are plenty of examples in the current World Tour team. So it's great to see a sponsor from outside of cycling committing long term to both men's and women's racing. Chapeau. We have a brand new giveaway this week, thanks to Continental Tyres, who are actually the vehicle division of our own tyre partners, Continental. And the reason being is that they're one of the sponsors of the Prudential Ride London Sportif. And they are giving away seven pairs of tickets that will allow you to take part in this iconic event on closed roads, 100 miles of closed roads, in fact, around central London and Surrey here in the UK. And not only that, actually, you also get a pair of Continental GP4002 tyres. Mm. That is a great prize, isn't it? Because the tyres are, quite frankly, brilliant. Yep. The choice of many pros, even though they're not sponsored by them, that's what they'll tell you. Uh, but also the fact that that event, I know, is well oversubscribed each and every year, which leads to a lot of disappointment amongst people who've tried to enter. So if you have entered and you haven't got in, but you want to, why not enter using the link in the description down below? Right, good luck with that. Uh, on to some winners from last week's oh. giveaway, which was courtesy of Park Tools. Uh, you'll remember that it was the Park Tools small torque wrench and accompanying socket set, socket set, should I say. Uh, here are the six winners. Russell Bainbridge over in the US, Daniel Burke in Australia, Ron Dube in the US, Peter Emmanuel in Australia, Jonas Rausted in Denmark, I've got that wrong. Uh, and finally, Jess Atkinson here in Great Britain. Well done to all of you. We will be in contact, if we haven't done so already, to get your prizes sent out to you. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now, and we're going to begin with this picture sent in by Nikolai Krikonenko on Facebook. What? The what triple saddle, the good old triple saddle. I don't get that, mate. No, I don't either. Never seen it before in my life. Could have, be. have they made a homemade recumbent bike? Maybe it's quite s comfortable sat in the centre part of those three. So I've no idea. I think we should move on. From Imagine if one. you stop suddenly. <laughs> bodge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Total bodge. Uh, next up on Twitter from Gannon. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I suppose it's only as bad as rowing, isn't it? Rowing, you just sit on a plank of wood. Yeah, I bike mean, riding that can't is... be comfortable, can it? Not in the slightest. It's right. Again, especially if you slide forward straight over that bolt. Uh, next up from Trey on Twitter. I uh, found this in Little Italy, New York at the weekend. Whoa. There's a lot to dwell on there, but I don't think we should dwell too long because that is no DeLorean, is a it? A true garbage bike, I think. Yeah. Nothing of much use that I can see on there, though. There's just... Just a lot rubbish. Of faff. Just I'm rubbish. Right handlebars. Bodge. There you go. Okay. Unlike this one, which admittedly looks like a load of rubbish to start with, but apparently it's fully functional Di2 remote shifters. Homemade. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, well, fair play for making those. I mean, yeah. They don't look pretty, and you know, but if they change a the gear, hack. There we go. Yeah. yeah well done the bike general over on Instagram. Cannings would love that. He would. He, he loves a Di2 hack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one also on Instagram came in from Koda Gosu. <laughs> My bike now has its own mini me. I love that. That is very cool, isn't it? Yeah, thanks to Al's Creative, who must have built that for him. I never really got into those Airfix models, you know, where you make like old planes and stuff. But if they had bikes, I <laughs> definitely got into that. That's, that, that's when you know actually your love of cycling has gone yeah, too far. Yeah, when you have to have a mini version of your yeah. bike that you ride. Yeah. That's that's a warning. You've, you've gone too far. Yeah, all right, okay. Anyway, we're gonna finish up with this one here from Tim Print on Twitter. I don't really know why that has happened, but anyway, someone has got creative with their welding and... Uh, well, they must have a really long torso. They've they? got a stretch bike. Well, and a really laid back seat angle. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a very neat world on the top two, is it? No, it's mm. terrifying. But anyway, there we go. Yeah. That's why we love Hack or Bodge. Thanks to all of you who sent them in last week. Uh, don't forget the hashtag is GCN Hack, and we tend to look on Twitter, Facebook, and also Instagram. Caption competition now, which is, as you know, your chance to win a GCN Camelback water bottle, just like this one, in fact. Uh, a reminder, side please, of last week's photo. Well, it was this one of Bob Jungles on the podium of Liège Brass on Liège with some form of dried cured meat. And the winner, it was an absolute pearl of this one, from Tom Quinlan. This will make a great Luxemburger. 
I thought that was. He didn't even get one like underneath that comment, and I thought to it be was fair, genius. it's because there were like five thousand comments under last week's show. Yeah, uh, right. So true. obviously, uh, everyone's saying goodbye to Matt. But you know, it meant it was a little bit harder to find captions <laughs> in there, wasn't it? But there we go. That is a pearl. Well done, Tom. Yeah. Camelback Bottle coming over to you. Yeah, make sure you get in touch on Facebook Messenger with your address. This week's photo is this one of former world champion Georgia Bronzini on the podium at Tour Chongming Island. It's a good photo, that, isn't it, Dan? It is. But tricky for a caption. Have you thought of anything? I have thought long and hard, and this is what I've come up with. <clears throat> have you ever seen a star jump? Said Georgia Bronzini, former world champion on the podium before doing a star jump. Well, anyway, Sai's not impressed. Uh, well, now you've explained it, it's great. <laughs> Uh, really it's in the timing, isn't it? Have you ever seen a star jump? I'll leave it there. Uh, leave your captions in the comment section down below, and we shall trawl through them this time next week and find our favourite. Probably just as well you talk about Aeropods and FTP at parties, isn't it? Stick on something safe. Yeah. Before we let you know what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days, a few comments from last week's videos. Uh, of course, as I just mentioned in caption competition, we had floods of comments coming in in tribute to Matt, uh, who is leaving the channel. And he was quite emotional, wasn't he? Really, he was. through, uh, pretty, pretty much read through all of them, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did indeed, yeah. So uh, obviously, he's already said thank you on various forms of social media, but we know there was a heartfelt thanks from Matt as well. And for us too, because yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see you supporting him too. Uh, right, but amongst all those, what about some other perlers down there? Yeah, Michael McDermott was amongst those who commented under last week's video, but he also commented underneath top 10 cy Italian cycling phrases. The scesista, she, she. The GT, which was done by Matt. He said this, uh, watching this video was like finding old love letters from a girlfriend that dumped you. <laughs> uh, always good, Michael. Uh, right, and then this one, we got this from Ian Haskins under Emma's Bike Fit video uh, that went up on Sunday. He said, uh, did you ever compete, Emma? To which she replies, uh, yeah, a bit, says the three-time British national TT champion, world TT champion, national road race champion, and Olympic silver medalist and Commonwealth silver medalist. Uh, valid point, actually, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah she's well decorated we and modest. We competed a bit, didn't we? Emma competed. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. And did yeah. pretty well. Uh, right, coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got a new How to Climb video, but this time it's with a really good climber, Mikel Lander, I uh, who I went that, to see in the Basque Country last week, so you can look forward to that. Uh, on Thursday, we've got two top tens. Firstly, our top ten riders to watch at the Giro d'Italia, and also our top ten map moments. Yeah. It, uh, I've got to warn you though, typical Matt, this goes on a bit, it's not just a top 10, it's like a top 25. Yeah, well, plenty of viewing time for your yeah. pleasure there. Top Matt moments anyway, there we go. Uh, Friday of course is Ask GC Anything. Yeah, Saturday Emma shows you her favourite core stretching routines, so there you go, maybe that's something that we can try to close the gap slightly to Emma's ability levels. Then on Sunday, I can't wait for this one actually, this is a follow up to Dan's look around the ceramic speed headquarters. This is a bit of an investigation into ceramic ball bearings. Yeah, exactly cool. how they're made and how much difference they can make. Mega, can't wait for that. And then uh, Monday, of course, is our racing news roundup. And Tuesday, of course, is the GCN show. And don't forget to keep your eye out for some special Giro d'Italia content. That oh, race, yeah. of course, is starting on Friday in Jerusalem. And probably a good time to mention, actually, that we have got these special edition t-shirts for the month of oh, May. Yeah. Uh, this one that you will have seen already last week on the show, and this new one with the Italian flag in navy blue with the pink logo sported by Sai. I absolutely love it, but we've got to say as well, we've got one of these bad boys as well. Check it out. This is just hit the shot. See that? It's one of those little poppy outy things on your phone. Excellent for selfies and also for watching GCN. I think I'm too old to get away with using. Well, you're on the limit. I what are you talking about? No, I can do that. Look, that's great. Yeah, all available over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, a link to which should be somewhere on the screen now. It's probably better for old people because it helps with that horrible moment where you're about to take a selfie and you think you might drop your phone. Hmm. It is getting towards the end of the show, unfortunately, but we still have time, of course, for Extreme Corner. And this week, is absolutely bonkers. This is from the ever brilliant Fabio Vibma, and this is Fabulous Escape 2. Make sure you check out the full video, all filmed in Saalbach in Austria.
always properly extreme, Fabio, isn't it? That's why we have mountain bikers on this part of the show. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I mean, that is pretty insane. Yeah? It's got to be said. I enjoyed uh, that. Fair play. Fair play, Fabio. Well, that is the end of this week's GCN show. As ever, if you've enjoyed it, please click on the thumbs up button below the video. Uh, if you can't wait until tomorrow for another one to come out and you've missed the Giro d'Italia preview show, you can find that. And it includes Matt. She's down here. <laughs> yeah, it does.